to tip or not to tip? That is the question. Nancy Giles goes in search of the tipping point. At Dirt Candy in New York City, Amanda Cohen and her staff spend their day chopping, rolling, and sauteing vegetables. What's the thing with you and vegetables? I just really like them, and you get to be so creative and have so much fun with them. We're like pioneers in the vegetable world, and it's fun. She's a pioneer in another way, too. There's a no tipping policy at her restaurant. What would you say is the biggest plus about having a no tip system? There's quite a few, actually. One is my guests don't have to do math at the end of the night. <laughs> they can drink as much as they want and not have to worry. My staff is really happy. They all feel like they're making a fair wage. And a happy staff stays. You know, right now you hear about this revolving door in restaurants and there's not enough staff. I am overstaffed. I really respect the restaurants that have been able to stick with this. We just couldn't. Restaurateur Danny Meyer started a no-tipping policy in his restaurants in 2015. It took a lot of explaining because it's not the typical way that Americans go out to dine. Mm -hmm. But in that time, the consumers really got with the program. Then COVID hit. Restaurants closed. Jobs were lost. When they opened again... New Yorkers were literally throwing dollar bills at our servers. We said, we don't take tips here. After a week of that, I said to myself, this is insane. How can I say that I'm on the side of our staff and not permit them to benefit from putting themselves on the front line? Right. And so we did reinstate tipping. For now, he says, he has to live with it. Unfortunately, if you're going to eliminate tipping in your restaurant in this country, and you realize that most other restaurants are not doing that, mm -hmm. You put yourself at a decided disadvantage when it comes to people shopping menu prices. If and when this country says we're going to lay down our arms and stop tipping, we'll be, we'll be at the front of the yep. line. We've gotten used to tipping in restaurants, but now it seems we're being asked to tip everybody for everything. Do you tip the barista who gives you your coffee? And what about the person that hands you a muffin or a bottle of water at the deli? And then there are gig workers, Uber and Lyft drivers, the people who deliver your food or your groceries or your packages. And how much should we tip? And will the person who provided that service actually get it? We really do want to do the right thing. We want to tip and tip appropriately, but sometimes we just don't know. Even for etiquette expert Diane Gotsman, it's confusing. I walked up to the counter, I bought a mug from a diner, oh. they flipped that little um, tip app around, and it says tip, 20, mm -hmm. 25, 30, and then there is a button that says no tip, and that kind of feels, that feels uncomfortable. But for that quick exchange that happened in less than six seconds, mm -hmm. um, I hit no tip. As long as we allow one industry to get away with it, more and more and more industries are going to want that boondoggle. Saru Jayaraman says giving tips instead of wages began in the South after the Civil War. We in America uniquely mutated tipping from being an extra bonus on top of a wage to becoming a replacement for wages. That became law in 1938 as part of the New Deal when everybody got the right to a federal minimum wage for the first time, okay. but tipped workers were excluded. She is the founder of One Fair Wage. Our fight is to just get everybody a full minimum wage with tips on top. For everybody to be guaranteed a full wage from their employer, like every other worker in every other industry, and let tips be what they were always intended to be. As for Amanda Cohen, she gets a good night's sleep these days. We are packed every night. Would you ever consider going back to the tip system? Absolutely not. I think uh, this restaurant's on the right side of history. <laughs>